Hey, what's up, homies? Welcome back to the sixth episode of the Homies Real Estate Podcast. This is your host, Anthony Lovanos. And today, we're going to be diving into the 2020 real estate market, recapping it nationally and in here in Los Angeles County. And boy, are we excited to finally be done with 2020 and head into 2021. But it was one of the craziest years in real estate. And it's important that we recap it before we start to make projections for 2021. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. So I'm going to be referencing Housing Wire, an article they have here, and they did a pretty good job of explaining 2020 real estate. And It shows that in the first two months or three months from January up until March 18th, we had double digit growth year over year in purchase applications. And this was really encouraging. And they reference a chart that I'm going to put onto our video version of this podcast that you can find on YouTube by the Mortgage Bankers Association Purchase Index, which just shows a linear line from 2015 till March of 2020 that shows year over year growth. And then also housing starts in February showed nearly 40% growth year over year as well. So we had more people applying for homes and more people building homes because housing starts do reference homes being built. So it was the perfect matrimony for another strong year in real estate. And it's important because real estate plays a critical role in the overall health of the economy on our GDP output and so forth. But the dreadful day that the virus hit the United States took toll, right? And it shook not just the world, not just the United States, but the real estate market especially. So right when this had occurred, a lot of people weren't sure if real estate was considered an essential activity. So because of that, a lot of people took their homes off the market. A lot of buyers weren't willing to look at homes. There wasn't really any guidelines for realtors on how to show properties in this new coronavirus economy. So it affected the real estate market negatively. So if we had four straight weeks of declines in the housing market, and then the next five weeks, it kind of remained stagnant. And you can see this when we look at the Los Angeles County market. So in January of 2020, the median sales price was about 635,000. It increases to 660,000 by March, right? And then that's when the pandemic really took its toll and it decreased for the next two months to about $637,000. When we look at closed volume, closed volume in January, of this year was about 7.5 trillion and then it increases to about 8.7 trillion by March and then it just drops all the way to 5 trillion dollars in May which is the smallest closed volume that we ever had in May in over 10 years for Los Angeles County and it really is because of the pandemic and it's told that it took but fortunately we got some action and we got some guidelines. So we had the CARES Act that was passed that helped a lot of people. We had protocols that were passed by the California Association of Realtors and the National Association of Realtors that told realtors how to show properties and how to sell homes in a coronavirus economy. And then we had the Federal Reserve that dropped interest rates to historically low levels. And this brought out a lot of buyers. And we had the, the government essentially say, hey, we know how important real estate is to the overall health of the economy. We're going to do whatever we can to drive up the real estate market. And in doing so, we were back in business. So for the next 29 weeks, we had year over year growth over 20%. So the reason we were starting to see strong median sales price growth was because interest rates dropped to historically low levels. That means more buyers are hitting the market. That means more buyers can now have higher purchasing power. So on average, a decrease in interest by 1% increases purchasing power by about 10%. So now a person that last year was approved for 500,000 just because of the interest rate being 1% lower, they now can purchase a home for $550,000. So since more people are now able to purchase a higher amount, they can now bid more for homes and that drove up the price of homes. But one thing 
did come to realization because of this because there was so much demand and there was a little bit of inventory home prices hit historically high levels and a lot of people are predicting that because interest rates are going to continue to stay low and actually freddie mac said they can get as low as 2.3 percent by sometime in 2021 that purchase price is going to continue to go up and there's going to be there's going to continue to be a lot of demand for homes so this is essentially what 2020 real estate was in one year it was strong predictable growth and then a drop significant drop historically low levels and then right back up to historically high levels because of the backing of the Federal Reserve and the United States government that said, hey, we know how important the real estate market is to the overall health of the economy. And if we want to recover appropriately, we're gonna have to drop interest rates and really focus on the real estate market. And this was crazy, crazy for the lot for uh, Los Angeles real estate. So for Los Angeles real estate, sales price went from 635,000 in January to by the December of 2020, 730,000. So it had increased $100,000 up 12.3% year over year. That's crazy appreciation for a lot of people that that have homes already. And according to Housing Wire, 2020 ended the year as the most outperforming sector of the economy. And a lot of experts are predicting that sales price will continue to go up for the next couple of years because we have interest rates that are going to remain low through 2023, like the Federal Reserve said. So there is your 2020 recap. If you have any questions, just let us know. Again, this is your host, Anthony Lovinos. I want to wish you all the best. Take care, homies. Hey, homies, it's Anthony. This podcast contains my opinions and is for educational purposes only. It does not guarantee any projections and should not serve as a basis for any purchase or sale in real estate. 